All right, so here is the uh, proof that the area of a kite is equal to half the product of the diagonals. Uh, we've got a little bit of work to do before that, and that'll be based on a triangle proof, uh, triangle congruency proof. So, start it off with let the diagram be given. And in that diagram, we know we've got a kite, and we know we've got these two diagonals as defined. So the vertical diagonal is D1, horizontal diagonal is D2. All right, so what we need to do, first of all, is um, show what these diagonals, or what this diagonal in particular, is doing. Um, so let the diagram be given. Uh, we're going to look at uh, triangle ADC. triangle ADC and triangle ABC. So we're going to show or prove that triangle ADC, so that's this bigger triangle on the left, is congruent to triangle ABC. Alright, and we can do that by side, side, side relatively easily. So we've got these, uh, based on the definition of a kite, we've got these congruency marks for the side. So my first side argument is that AD is congruent to uh, AB and you can either call it given or you can say by definition of a kite it's probably the proper way to do it so by the definition of a kite we can say the same thing or that those two pieces are congruent next one is DC and BC and that's by that same reasoning definition of a kite two consecutive uh, congruent sides the last one is just your shared side, and that's diagonal 1 or AC. So AC is congruent to AC by the reflexive property. So what we just showed is that the larger kite on the left here, or larger triangle on the left, ADC is congruent to uh, the larger triangle on the right, ABC by SSS. And then we can use that um, to show that pieces are congruent. Um, and in particular, again, we're interested in what this piece right here is doing. And what that piece is doing, because these two triangles are congruent, we can match up the corresponding parts. And in particular, we're interested in these two angles. Um, so these angles would be the same. Uh, these angles would also be the same. But we want to relate it to the diagonal. So... Uh, using CPCTC, we know that um, angle DAE, or DAC I probably should say, is congruent to angle BAC. So the next step is to use that, and the way that we use that is the fact that this triangle up here is an isosceles triangle. So uh, the next part of this, let me change colors here. So we're looking at uh, these top triangles here. This guy right here. And it's chopped up into those two triangles. Um, since triangle ADB is isosceles and we just showed that these two angles are congruent, so AE is, a, is an angle bisector. Well, if AE is an angle bisector in an isosceles triangle, we know it's also uh, the uh, altitude. And we proved that earlier this year. And what that does for us is allow us to make these markings and show that all of these intersections are perpendicular. Or these the intersections of the two diagonals are perpendicular. All right. So the next piece that we know, uh, and we can use the same reasoning. So since um, 
triangle ADB is isosceles, and AE is the angle bisector. Um, we can also say that um, AE is going to bisect these two sides here. I'm going to use different markings. But we know in an isosceles triangle, if it's the vertex um, angle up here that we're chopping, we know the angle bisector is the same as uh, the perpendicular bisector of the opposite side is the same as the altitude, and therefore AE um, bisects DB, or in this case, what we call D2. So it chops that diagonal in half. So that's kind of the pre-work that we need to do. Um, the next step here then is to show uh, the, or to, to prove that this particular area is what they say it is. So um, in proving that, what we're going to do is look at the area of the individual triangles. All right, so we know that the area of what I'm going to label triangle or Roman numeral one Roman numeral 2, Roman numeral 3, and Roman numeral 4. So we're going to find the area of each one of these. So let's go ahead and do that. So the area of Roman numeral 1 is going to be 1 half the base times the height. Well, in this case, the base of 1 is DE, or 1 half the diagonal. So that's my base. So that's D2 times the top portion of D1. And that top portion of D1 is AE. So I'll go ahead and write it as AE. That's your height. So that's the area of 1. It also happens to be the area of 2. So that equals the area of Roman numeral 2. Next pieces are the bottom pieces here. So we're looking at 3 and 4. So the area of 3 is equal to 1 half the base times the height. So half the base again. 1 half. The base is half of D2. The height is EC. And that also equals... Uh, the area of triangle 4, or Roman numeral 4. So the total area of this thing is going to be all of these pieces added together. So we're going to have the area of the kite is equal to each one of these pieces. So we've got these pieces twice in here. So 2 times the first part here, 1 and 2. So we've got 1 half times 1 half. D2 times AE plus the two bottom portions, the area of the two bottom portions. So that would be, uh, because they're congruent, we've got two of them. So two times one half D2 times EC. Simplify a little bit. Uh, 2 times 1 half is going to cancel. We're going to get 1 half D2 times AE plus, again, 2 times 1 half um, and I actually forgot a 1 half over here. So sorry about that. But 2 times 1 half is going to cancel. We're going to end up with 1 half D2 again, times EC. And to finish this off, we've got the area of the kite. We're going to actually factor out a 1 half D2. 1 half D2, 1 half D2. And what we're left with on the inside is AE plus EC. And if we go back up to our diagram, AE is here. 
EC is this piece. So add those two up and you have diagonal one. And we're done. Therefore, the area of a kite equals one half D1 times D2.